Okay, so today we'll talk about Adam and Eve. Okay, um, this is just some inserts, and what actually got me going on it was um, Rose got to talking about uh, Lilith, and so I actually looked up Lilith to just kind of touch up on it. So this is actually the Lilith myth. And then as we read it, we started decoding it, and this is what we got out of it. So, Adam's help me. So having decided to give Adam a help me, lest he should be alone of his kind, God put him into a deep sleep, removed one of his ribs, formed it into a woman, and closed up the womb. Adam awoke and said, This shall be named woman, because she has been taken out of man. A man and woman shall be one of flesh, one flesh. The title he gave her was Eve, the mother of all living. Very nice. Do you want to stop there and have a quick go through all that? Yep. Right. Let's have a look. The first thing uh, it reminded me of was remember that... Um, that image where you've got the ones the one like lightning strike splitting into two where you've got a positive and negative mm -hmm. you remember the the, the uh, depiction of that where, the, where you got yeah. a positive negative. that's exactly what i thought when you first read that out i thought this is like an electrical process where it's dividing one from another to create a male and female yep yep or positive negative male female yeah that's where I got from that straight away. <laughs> but we'll carry on, you know, it may get more interesting. Okay. Some say that God created man and woman in his own image on the sixth day, giving them charge over the world. But the Eve did not yet exist. Now God had set Adam to name every beast, bird, and other living thing. When they passed before him in pairs, male and female, Adam, being already like 21-year-old man, felt jealous of their loves, and though he tried coupling with each female in turn, found no satisfaction in the act. He therefore cried, every creature but I has a proper matel, and prayed God would remedy this injustice. Interesting. It's like there's, there was a positive looking for a, it's opposite, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Positive ne uh, negative connection. I don't, you know, I'm not looking at it as a, a person describing what they're looking at here. I'm looking at the, these electrical connections being uh, harnessed and made into something, basically. What do you yeah. get? What do you get out of that one? Well, and remember what we talked about: how the magnets would seek each other. Yeah. To yeah. To grab hold of each other. Yeah, the attraction. Yeah, but it's basically the same thing. Yeah, he's, um, you know, he's seeking out his his opposite. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I don't know what the age has got anything to do with it there. It's like a one year old man so jealous of their loves. It's like yeah, it's like that electric bolt's looking for a, a pair well, a partner, isn't it? Something <laughs> some kind of interaction yeah. they're gonna go on. Yep. So God then formed Lilith, the first woman, just as he had formed Adam except that he used filth and sediment instead of pure dust. From Adam's union with this demoness and with another like her named Nama, Tubal, Cain's sister, sprang Asmosteus and innumerable demons that still plague mankind. Many generations later, Lilith and Nama came to Solomon's judgment seat, disguised as harlots of Jer Jerusalem. Do you see why I found it so interesting now? 
Yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're all, they're all interested, aren't they, when you start looking at them? Yeah. There is this lots to because get Because Lilith gets forgotten about all the time. And it's very annoying. It has always been annoying to me. And then, because it's always about the females being forgotten about or suppressed or whatever through history and everything else, isn't it, supposedly, and whatever. And then... Um, with these eyes, it was like, well, that sounds interesting because she came first and then it went wrong. It was she wasn't good enough. So then Eve came along. Well, and the fact that he, he used filth and sediment instead of pure dust, mm. that again would be like the positive negative. Right, the pure yeah. dust seems like it would be a positive, and the filth and sediment, you know, remind is like negative to people. Yeah, demons and demonesses are, as I've thought, you know, um, they are a, a frequency. You know, I always go back to when Jimbo played Solomon's Demons for us that one time. Remember that FPV? Yeah. And it actually went through and listed what each demon would plague mankind with. But it was it was simple things like sickness or headaches or and that to me sounded like different frequencies that would cause those to, to demand. Yeah, that's like you put in that um that clip you put out about the EMF. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And the forest where people go so the yep. demons, uh, you know, you could class them as harmful frequencies then. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I've been thinking for a while, yep. Yeah, that would make sense. Uh -huh. So then Adam and Lilith never found peace together. For when he wished to lie with her, she took offense at the recumbent posture he demanded. Why must I lie beneath you, she asked. I was also made from dust, and therefore I am your equal. Because Adam tried to compel her obedience by force, Lilith, in rage, uttered the magic name of God, rose into the air, and left him. <laughs> that, is, that is so easy, isn't it? Do you yes. think, yeah. Right, because they can't lie together, it's the magnetic repelling of each other. The, um she, she got repelled because of the magnetism you know it's a positive and neg negative of a magnet you're looking at and one's caused the other to be repelled because they can really never be together they can't get close enough to actually be together and that's why she left him she was flung aside basically because of the, the forces between the two uh, the two magnets so you're looking at magnetism here right exactly and like we had talked about and you said the other day when you put two magnets and you try to push one down on the other, it pushes it back into the air. It keeps pushing it back up. You yeah. can't put them together. Anybody that's ever played with magnets knows that. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Because we are looking at magnetism and electricity. Yeah. So... Adam complained to God, I have been de deserted by my helpmate. Help me. God at once sent the angels, Senyoi, San Senyoi, and Sem Semengalaf, to fe fetch Lilith back. They found her beside the Red Sea, a region abounding in lavish demons, to whom she bore Lilum at the rate of more than 100 a day. Return to Adam without delay. Again, but already you can see there. Uh, where we at? Do, 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 do. They found her beside the Red Sea, a region abounding in lascivious demons. Now, the Red Sea to me is not the sea that we know of, 
The Red Sea to me now I think is the lake of fire down below. A region abounding in lascivious demons, which it would be. You know, you're looking at a nuclear lava down there. That's what it's telling me there. She that's she ended up somewhere beside the lake of fire. <laughs> so there must have been a big piece of repelling going on and she and it just flung her up in the air somewhere and she landed by the Red Sea basically. So this is taking place on the ground, it's telling me, not uh, not in our world, but in the underworld. Right. She bore to him Lilum at the rate of more than 100 a day. Yeah, what's, what does that tell you? What's unusual, that is. Bore Lilum at the rate of more than 100. So what is a Lilum? Her babies, her demons. Ah, frequencies then, we're looking at her. Lots of frequencies, there's more than a hundred right there. And we've got to remember, they made a point of saying Adam was 21, so we've got to keep in mind 21, this hundred, and any other specific numbers that come up to. Yeah. I'm not getting the connection with the 21 just yet, but one of you guys might. Yeah, it's just, you know, stick a pin in it, isn't it? It might yeah, be. Yeah, the, yeah, the numbers will come into play somewhere, for sure. Return to Adam without delay, the angels said, or we will drown you, Lilith asked. Lilith asked, how can I return to Adam and live like an honest housewife after my stay beside the Red Sea? I will be death ref to refuse. It will be death to refuse, they answered. How can I die, Lilith asked again, when God has ordered me to take charge of all the newborn children, boys up to the eighth day of life, that of circumcision, Girls up to the 20th day. Nonetheless, if I ever see you three names or likenesses displayed in an amulet above a newborn child, I promise to spare it. To this they agreed, but God punished Lilith by making 100 of her demon children perish daily. And if she could not destroy a human infant because of the angelic amulet, she would spitefully turn against her own. Interesting. That's kind of saying, telling me that there's harmful frequencies that can harm humans. And you know, if she, if this technology breaks that rule, then there's going to be trouble. <laughs> Naughty angel room for you. That's what I'm kind of looking at there. If she could not destroy a human infant because of the angelic amulet, she would spitefully turn against the woman. And she believes going back to the source would be death. It sounds like it's, um, you know, relating to if it goes out of specification or something, there's going to be a problem. Um, I can't see anything more in that I can pull out of it. Okay. Um, some say that Lilith ru ruled as queen in Zamargad and again in Sheba and was the demoness who destroyed Job's sons. Yet she escaped the curse of death, which overtook Adam since they had parted long before the fall. 
Lilith and Nama not only strangle infants, but also seduce dreaming men, any one of whom sleeping alone may become their victim. That's got to be frequency related, doesn't it? EMF, things like that. I'm not sure. Yeah. I don't know who Job's sons is. I've never read Job's uh, or Job. But um, it could relate to nodes on a halo or anything that. And she skipped the curse of death with Joe who took Adam. It sounds like some kind of, some kind of relationship with uh, electricity and things going on, doesn't it? Frequency, nodes 1, 2 and 8 perhaps coming into play. Something along those lines I'm looking at there. Still, I'm, trying, I'm still trying to work out what it is is telling the story. Is it a halo or nodes or nodes, group of nodes? A whole series of these things are people telling you how they work. <laughs> Going through the list of options. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I suppose when you're asleep, um, you might be more highly susceptible to frequencies and, and stuff. You know, we as people can, we can learn languages when we sleep, you know, just our brains are machines as they are. I mean. Would you like to know what happened to Job's sons? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Mm -hmm. So this is from the King James Bible version just for standardization and it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about that job sent the sanctify uh, sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all for job said it may be my sons have sinned and cursed god in their hearts thus did job continually so he burnt them as offerings. It's a strange thing to do, but it's definitely in the, in the morning. Uh, it's definitely not talking about people, then, is it? It's uh, it sounds like Nord related to me. This I'm not sure who Job is, but Did you say him? what his role actually is, Job. But Job could be. You remember the the Twelve Gates presentation? There was a, there's like an accompaniment of. Not just the sun's halo, but other things accompany in this trace. They called it a train, didn't they? You know, it could be one of the train that follows the sun out. Oh, hang on, hang on. Did you say that he burnt them in the morning? Yes. We've so got... they sinned and he burnt them in the morning. Yes. That kind of tells me that they they failed. They didn't work right. And Aww. maybe when the sun, the sun came had, up, he Job also had three daughters. That could also be interpreted as um, burnt them in the mornings. It could be to you, you know, it could be the fuel that powers the sun. Right. Yeah. Very. Yeah. Yeah. Because it is burning. And he had three sons you know, and three daughters. It is burning something up, and then when it gets to the west and shuts down, it has to recharge again, doesn't it? Three sons and three daughters. Well, there's your positive and negatives of three sons and three daughters. That's the three opposites, or, you know, sets. It could be those six uh, items we've put on the grid. Those very big, large uh, magnetic anomalies. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yep, from the last presentation. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we'll have to factor the new parts in now. <laughs> Are they talking about nodes, halos, or other things that's switching mechanisms, basically? It sounds yeah. like it sounds like Job could be part of that switching mechanism or something, doesn't it? Yeah, very well could be. Right, back to you, Juan. Okay. Um, undismayed by his failure to give Adam a suitable helpmate, help 
God tried again and let him watch while he built up a woman's anatomy using bones, tissues, muscle, blood, glandular secretions, then covering the hole with skin and adding tufts of hair in place. The sight caught Adam with such disgust that even when this woman, the first Eve, stood there in her full beauty, he was an incon he felt an inconceivable repugnance. repugnance. <laughs> God knew that he had failed once more and took the first Eve away. Where she went, nobody knows for certain. Yeah, it does sound like someone's trying to make a person there, doesn't it? <laughs> All these bits and pieces. Well, Weird parts, science. Parts of human anatomy going on there, isn't there? Yeah. But why would he be such uh, disgusted, so? That doesn't make sense, does it? Yeah, oh yeah, not to me anyway. And it's, yeah, it just doesn't make sense to me why you would feel that way towards something that's just been created. Oh, there's a problem that we're not seeing the, you know, it's a process with a problem that we're not, that we're probably looking at. Yeah, we'll move on. See what comes up next. Yeah. <clears throat> God tried a third time and acted more circumspectly. Having taken a rib from Adam's side in his sleep, he formed it into a woman, then plaited her hair and adorned her like a bride. The 24 pieces of jewelry before waking him, and Adam was entranced. 24 pieces of jewellery remind me of the 24 elders around North Point North. Yeah. And it does sound now like they were trying to, you know, make a, a perfect negative. Obviously, Adam is what they would call the perfect positive and usable. And now they were trying to form a negative. So, you know, so there's a positive and negative, your, your electrical connections. Uh, why, yeah. you know, why they would play as a hen, a dawn, I'm not sure, but... Well, plated and adorned. Um, well, saying that plated is it kind of describes how wires wrapped is, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. When you look at copper wire in a cable, it's plated. When you look at it, <laughs> it could be electrical yeah. electrical cable. You're looking at the. It also made me think only of the twenty four elders because that was my first thought. But also, what about the twenty four hours of the day? Yeah, I thought that too. Yeah, it could well be. More shall be revealed as we go on, I think. But yeah, it's getting interesting, isn't it? Yes. Because <laughs> um, it might mean both anyway, because it's 24 is an important number. Yeah. Um, some say that God created Eve, not from Adam's rib, rib but from a tail ending in a sting which had been part of his body. God cut this off, and the stump, now a useless cockyx, is still carried by Adam's descendants. Right, that rib could uh, be that lightning bolt thing again, the tail ending in the sting, which it would because there's electricity there, and it was part of him, cut this off, and the stump now a useless. So... I think that's where it's dividing that um, the first form of lightning into a positive and negative. The useless coccyx is still carried by Adam's descendants. Well, yeah, that would still apply. You know, the the positive has been st it stopped doing anything else but being a positive, and the ne negative's now been formed. So they've got a, you know a perfect positive and negative. So, so it looks like you know they've been experimenting with. Uh, the electrical process is trying to perfect it and getting it right. But over to you guys, in case you see someone I'm not. That makes sense to me. The steam, yeah. Me too. Messing with electricity. He failed three times and then got it right. Is that three again? Yeah, I think that explains uh, H correctly, <laughs> or close to. 
Um, others say that God's original thought had been to create two human beings, male and female. But instead, he decide, designed a single one with a male face looking forward and a female face looking back. Again, he changed his mind, removed Adam's backward-looking face, and built a woman's body for it. That's telling me it's a magnet. Well, you got the male yeah. and female on opposite sides. You know, it's exactly it's, it's describing a bar magnet to me. Or anything electrical that's got the positive and negative opposite of each other. Changed his mind. Hmm. So what was made next then? <laughs> Can't wait to see. <laughs> Can't wait to see. Um, still others hold... Are you going to say something? Uh, I was going to comment, but it doesn't matter. Still others hold that Adam was originally created as an androgen of male and female bodies joined back to back. Since this posture made locomotion different and conversation awkward, God divided the androgen and gave each half a new rear. These separate beings he placed in Eden, forbidding them to couple. Same again, isn't it? It's like a magnet. There can never be a couple because they're the complete opposites. Exactly. What so I was going to what I was, was going to say before was about the Adam's backward-looking face and built it into a woman's body, but kind of thing. Because okay, he knows it's works. He knows the complete opposites. So he knows he's going to call it a female or the or the negative. You know. I think that's it on that sentence before. So just finishing that off there. Yeah, I think that's you know where he actually named it a positive and negative. Or Adam and Eve, as it was obviously called in those times. Yep. So in Eden, you know, back to that part, these separate beings he placed in Eden, we can jump to Ceres' findings of the four pillars, because they do look like very large bar magnets to me. Yeah, they do. So yeah, we'll we'll have to remember that and overlay them. You know, this could possibly could be what they're talking about these very large bar magnets that we've got down below. You know, there will be a bit somewhere I'm thinking where we'll either get to the four pillars, or we're going to find out there's four bar magnets down there. But yeah, back to you. Um, I mean, I agree. You know, we already talked about this prior but still um yes and now that you mentioned series map absolutely they do look like magnets yeah they have to oh. be don't they you know and there is a strong pull on the north so yeah we're probably sitting right on top of four bar, ma bar magnets well kind of in the middle of them all yep um And then it just goes through the sources, and this is the author's comments, which probably won't be anything like ours, so I'm not going to go into that. And that's it. <laughs>